Hello everyone, welcome to Deeper Learning with Grimsman Knives. Today we're going to talk about heat treat, probably the most important part of making a knife. Um, we've changed a few things, we've modified our recipe, we've improved things. Uh, we believe in continuous improvement here, so we've done a bit of research and we wanted to improve on our heat treat. We added cryo, um, we added a double temper. The reasons we did that, we wanted to basically find a more stable, um, consistent recipe that would net everybody better results. So what we've done is we reached out to a PhD metallurgist, a good friend of ours out in Europe, who's done extensive testing on this material. He runs a laboratory and he makes knives himself. So we uh, reached out to him and he shared with us a bit of feedback, looking at our, our uh, setups, looking at the equipment that we have, and basically how we can improve what we're doing here. Um, so what we've done is we've added a double temper um, and we've added cryo. And I'm gonna hand this over to Sky, who's gonna go into a bit more details as to what we've done, and we'll go from there. Thank you. So, the new recipe, the uh, sanitizing temperature is slightly raised, um, and then we're quenching, and it's going into cryo for an hour after the quench. The cryo uh, process adds toughness, edge retention, and one extra point, one to two extra points of hardness. And then from there, it's coming out, going into temper. We're doing two tempers now, which will convert more hard martensite into slightly softer but very tough tempered martensite and with the new process it's not really that our old process was bad we're just pushing for that last one percent of perfection exactly in order to validate these findings you always got to validate your theories we brought this to a third-party laboratory where they've done uh, three different tests on it in order to determine uh, essentially our grain structure and if there's any retained austenite. So in the past, uh, there was pretty much no retained austenite. What we're seeing now is a slightly refined grain structure, which should add a bit of toughness. So if we were to send this out for a next step of testing, we'd probably do an impact testing, a Charpy, Izod, or whatever it may be, and determine the toughness. Um, the issue with that is we'll have to buy some blanks and make the, the exact sizes that we need, um, but that might be something we might do in the future. Where we stand now, we're definitely seeing a bit of improvement. Um, we're going to get a bit more consistency and, and cryo is definitely going to add some hardness. So we're pretty excited about this. It doesn't add too much complexity to the process. It's just an extra step with the liquid nitrogen and we have two tempers on our oven anyway. So um, yeah, we're, this is exciting. We, we really like it and we're essentially validating what we believe and, and that's what everybody should do if you have a theory if you have a recipe you got to make sure that it's actually working and the best way to do that is with people who are experts in that field so we had reached out to a metallurgy lab um, locally to us and they were able to do some testing yeah we definitely saw improvements already with flatness uh, by quenching it really fast yeah. uh, by a fast quench allows you to reduce any retained austenite um, and this is going to essentially make a tougher uh, more consistent material and yeah, we're, we're seeing that now. We've got the results back and we'll show them up on the screen and hopefully you guys like what we did. Welcome everyone to the results of our third party heat treat testing. Let's dig right in. Uh, first, we're going to start off with the chemical composition of the steel that we had tested. Uh, the metallurgist that we brought the steel to wasn't familiar with RWL34 since it's it's basically just made by Dana Steel and it's really only used in knife making. Um, it's chemically very similar to Crucible's CPM154 steel. So everything in here is labeled as CPM154 because that's what showed up in his XRF spectrometer library, I suppose. When he scanned it, it came up with CPM154. So. We've got our two different samples. The first one was our old single temper recipe. The new one is our cryo double temper recipe. And if you look up the recipe for RWL34, this here is pretty close to what it should be. It's within spec. And then everything else from here down, just random stuff that the XRF was picking up. Uh, so let's move on to the metallography. The metaller just actually cut some pieces off of our steel and lapped them to a mirror finish and then etched them with a special etchant that reveals the grain structure and carbides. So we're able to view the grain structure and carbides at 500 magnification uh, just with an optical microscope. If we wanted to go even further, we could view it under a scanning electron microscope. But even at this magnification, you can see how the grain structure is nice and tight and how the carbides are quite small, which is really what you'd like in a stainless uh, knife steel. He's done two different etchants here you can see just to give uh, two different views of the grain structure and carbides. 
just comparing the uh, results from the new recipe and the old recipe, you can see that the new recipe has much smaller carbides in general on average compared to the old recipe, which gives increased toughness. And then he noted down at the bottom here that there's no significant difference in texture of carbides in different textures, meaning no homogeneous on axial texture. Spherical primary carbides are evident in both specimens, which is true, they're both spherical carbides. Uh, the size of the carbides are no more than seven micron either specimen, which is true, but I do believe even just looking at these here that this has on average smaller carbide size than the old recipe. And he mentions that there's no evidence of retained austenite, untempered martensite, and delta ferrite in microstructures taken at magnification times 500, which is the kind of thing that we can't really see with an optical microscope, which is fine. Um, with the new cryo and double temper recipe, there should be absolutely no retained austenite and also no untempered martensite, which would result in either soft or brittle steel. And finally, we'll move on to hardness. Um, the new blade averaged out at 60.8 Rockwell. He took five tests overall, and the old blade averaged out at 59.3 Rockwell, and he took five readings as well. 60, high 60, 61 is a lot m more where we'd like to be in our heat treat just for performance, especially with cryo, you can push the hardness a, a bit higher and still keep some of that toughness. 59.60, not bad, definitely not not bad, but you're losing some edge retention once you start to dip down to 59.58. So overall, we're very glad that we went through and got this third party testing done. It basically verifies the science that we're applying into our process and shows that we actually did improve our process by adding cryogenic treatment and a double temper. All right, back to the workshop. All right, now we're over in our uh, heat treat lab. So I'm gonna hand this over to Sky. He's gonna explain to you guys some of the results that we got from our third party laboratory testing. And uh, yeah, he's gonna go through a few little details. He's our resident heat treater and our junior metallurgist. We did a chemical analysis, a hardness, uh, various hardness tests and the uh, microscopy. That way you guys can learn a bit more and you'll be able to see uh, the fine details of what we do and how we're proving out our work and uh, you know, making sure we're making good parts. Awesome, there you go. You got Thank the torch. <laughs> so here we've got some samples. These are some previous test coupons from dialing in the process. Uh, we've got, these are RWL blades and then this is Damas steel. Damas steel is two different steels whereas RWL 34 is a homogeneous stainless steel. And then these are the parts that we got back from the third party testing. This is the single temper blade, the old recipe, and then this is the cryo and double temper blade. He did a, a lot of hardness testing to make sure that everything was accurate. And these are the little slides that he prepared for the metallography where he m mirror polished the parts and then etched away some of the surface material to show the grain structure and carbides. And then they're viewed under a high magnification microscope just to verify that the grain structure and carbides are all good. So yeah, we're very pleased with the results. Our old recipe is good, new recipe is even better. All right, so we've added cryo to our process and Sky's gonna go over a few details as to uh, what happens in that process and why we did it. So basically, when you take the blades from quench out of austenitizing, you put them into liquid nitrogen uh, or some steels are fine with dry ice. We're using liquid nitrogen just because it's easy to get. Um, it takes any retained austenite and further converts it into hard martensite, which improves toughness, it improves edge retention, it improves hardness. It's basically better all around for the blade. You don't wanna really stick your hand in there, that's for <laughs> sure. We've got a depth gauge, because there's always a, essentially gas that's coming off of it, it's very hard to see inside. So we've got a plastic material, very key to use plastic because it's not going to conduct the uh, temperature up. Um, and when he pulls this out, you'll see exactly where the liquid nitrogen level is. Boiling pretty, uh, pretty intensely. From, oh yeah. Just from the ambient heat of the room. That should be, should be pretty good. Yep. So it'll start to crystallize at the top. You can see it's right there. Yeah, so that's our liquid level. We've got two lines scribed here. This is the very top of the container. This is basically like critical, it needs to be refilled basically right above the containers that sit in the bottom where the blades are. So uh, we got maybe like a week left. But yeah, this, this works really well just for checking the liquid level. Yeah, we tried an aluminum one and <laughs> immediately realized that that was a bad idea because it's... <laughs> the entire thing got covered in front. Yeah, that was, uh, I don't know why we didn't think about that one. 
So that's been Deeper Knowledge with Grimsom Knives. Thanks for joining us. So if you guys want to hear anything else or have anything else you guys want to learn about, let us know. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications if you want to see more videos like these.